everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, this uh, lovely day today of National Nursing Week on day four. We're very honored and privileged uh, to be part of uh, this great session with VHA opening the doors to us. I'm just going to give a few seconds. I know uh, technical difficulties always arise as we've been trying to deal with the hybrid session, making it uh, as accessible as we can to all of you. I know it takes a few seconds for everyone to join with their audio and video. I see you're all joining and there's many registered and we're very happy. So I'll be back in just uh, a couple of seconds to introduce you to VHA team and hear the lovely story regarding community and home cares that they have to share with us today. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, board members, colleagues, fellow case managers, care staff, VHA staff, welcome here with us today celebrating National Nursing Week 2024, changing lives, shaping tomorrow with VHA opening the doors to care center and telling us how they shape uh, tomorrow and how they change lives. A special welcome to our program manager, Rolel Mubader, our executive director, Ruth Lee, and all our honored speakers from VHA team from VHA headquarters. Um, I think I'm going to pass it over to all of you. My name is Bessie Nasiopoulos. I'm privileged to be here with all of you today and can't wait to hear from all of you at VHA headquarters. The floor is all yours. Happy Nursing Week, others. Four time actually this week. I'm so delighted that uh, we're actually on site at VHA Home uh, uh, Care Services and uh, our wonderful partner. Uh, so uh, I know that we have a jam packed uh, agenda today, uh, particularly there's an in person, hands on, uh, uh, I call it a showcase of the technology that we actually use at the home care. So it may give me great pleasure to introduce you a dear colleague of mine, uh, Sandra Lee James, who have been, uh, may I call you Party in Sin, one in our wonderful <laughs> days uh, at uh, UHN. Uh, and Sandra, I spent many uh, good moments there and uh, keep in touch uh, afterwards. So uh, it's just so wonderful for UHA to open this opportunity uh, to the care center uh, clients. So uh, Sandra Lee James uh, accomplished a lot. Uh, if I need to introduce her, I need to take up the whole hour. So I'm not gonna do that. So Sandra Lee James is the Vice President, Quality Best Practice and Chief Nursing Executive. Did I get it all right, Sandra? Yes. Uh, it seems that like your credentials is getting longer and longer. So <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I will let Sandra introduce her wonderful team and uh, we'll get the agenda uh, going. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. You're always very, very kind. And, you know, as always, love working with you and learning from you. If it's okay with all of you, I'm going to sit just because I feel very awkward standing over the camera. So I think we can go ahead with the deck. Bessie, I think you have the deck. Yes. So a warm welcome to all of our uh care of partners as well as all the um you know internationally educated nurses we're so delighted to host you and you do you will meet each and every one of the team members they are so excited to be with you today and you know also to learn from you i know we're sharing with you uh about home care but as well to learn from you. I just, it would be great just to get a sense of those of you who have a community experience, who have been in home care before. Ah, wonderful, lovely, excellent. Uh, excellent to know. So a lot of the folks in the room did put up their hand about having home care experience. And I don't know those online how many of you have a uh, home care experience? Just, uh, I guess you can use the, ah, I see a thumbs up. We have a, a three, three hands up. Excellent. All right. You probably know more than I do about home care. The reason is mm -hmm. I, this is two and a half years, uh, you know, at VHA and I was, and I, I always say it, I did grow up in an acute care setting. And, you know, it is a very different setting and I would say very fulfilling in going out with the nurses in the community, the PSWs and the rehab providers, 
uh, the commitment of the providers is bar none. And in terms of the impact on the clients is, you know, it's, I would say hundredfold, just uh, being able to support them in their homes for recovery and really optimizing their health. Um, I get really passionate about this, but I think I better go to the next slide, which is really, we really need to, uh, you know, I would today like to acknowledge, I know many of you may be joining from different parts of uh, Toronto and perhaps even, I'm not sure if there might be others, internationally um, so want to acknowledge that today where we're meeting is the traditional territory of many nations including the mississaugas of the credit the anishinaabeg the chippewa the Haudenosaunee, and the wendat peoples and i know i'm on a learning journey i continue to learn every day this is something you know um, really unlearning as well from my past education so thank you all for acknowledging uh, the land. And I think Ruth already started and Bessie started about, you know, happy nursing week to all my uh, nursing uh, colleagues. And, you know, one of the things I do want to say a little bit about the changing lives shaping tomorrow, you know, when we think about home care setting, it is, a, you know, when and I know Sandra is going to go into it, and so will our other two uh, VHA staff about internationally educated nurses and how you change lives and shape really tomorrow of home care and the impact that you can make. Next slide, please. I will stop after the slide so you don't have to listen to me for the rest of the time. Just really proud to share that VHA is celebrating we're celebrating our hundredth year next year and it really started out back in you know uh almost 100 years ago that as a visiting housekeeper uh center and over the years it evolved and then you will see that we have about over 3,000 staff and service providers we're a non-profit charitable organization with 500 nurses providing care across the continuum. So our complex children, um, you know, in home, in school, as well as our older adults. Uh, so across many settings, and we also have clinics as well. And I know that the team, probably Ernesto will, and team will go into this a little bit more. So you can see we do service a lot of clients and providing um, home care. Uh, and episodes of care is like 3 million. It's quite, you know, in terms of uh, the impact. And I believe I'm handing it over to next. Ah, wonderful. Sandra Tedesco um, is our regional director and Sandra will share with you her experience. And I know Sandra has been here for many years and. Sandra is the one I go to actually if I have a nursing question or you know I learning from Sandra about home care and you will learn a lot from her. So over to you, Sandra. Thank you. And before we start the next slide, I just want to introduce myself. I'm I'm proud to say I'm a registered nurse and have been for 47 years come September. It is um for I'm also retiring this year, but uh what will never change is my passion for nursing. But more importantly, the impact and how we change lives every day in home care. Uh, you don't have to be a Sandra to work at VHA, however. And uh, I want to say that uh, while Sandra Lee James spent the first uh, proportion of her career at a world famous adult host teaching hospital in Toronto, I spent the first half of my career at a world famous pediatric teaching hospital in Toronto called the Hospital for Sick Children. So when Sandra and I both speak about why we believe home care is the place where nurses can make the most difference, it is spoken truly from a perspective of all different kinds of home um, health care settings. And um, no one can pay me to say this because I truly believe that where VHA is and the values and the beliefs we feel about the clients we serve, the families who support them, and the people that provide that care, we must all adopt the same values of committing ourselves 
to the service we provide and honoring both our clients, our families, and our point of care providers, including our nurses. So um, I purposely and intentionally chose VHA as the place I wanted to continue my nursing career. And I know that you will feel equally like I do if you joined us. Next slide, please. I'd like to think that you couldn't, can you see yourself as a home care nurse, whether you choose VHA or not, but I'd like to think that you could picture yourself proud to work at VHA. When Sandra mentioned earlier that in 1925, it was a nurse, a registered nurse who started a program based on the need she saw that parent, mothers, when they went into hospital, had no one to take care of their children. And so she saw a gap. She saw a place where people could make a difference and she made that difference. She changed the lives by developing a team of visiting homemakers to go in to support families in that kind of crisis. Today would not look that way because now we have two parents, but it was interesting when I joined VHA, when I told people about where I was going and that was previously known as visiting homemakers, my sisters-in-law said, oh yeah, we had them come into our home because they were a family of nine when uh, their mother would go into hospital where when you gave birth, you stayed in hospital for at least 10 days. So I'd like to bring you with me as we start to think about, picture yourself as a home care nurse. Next slide, please. I'd like us to hear from some of the nurses who have been part of VHA. These are real pictures of our some of our nursing teams. Um, they look happy when they're together and I know they work from the heart, but let's hear from the nurses directly what they have to say about working at VHA. I've been working as a nurse for over 30 years. It is about that connection, the relationship that you form with the patients and clients. I was drawn into this profession because I was inspired by the nurse when I visited emergency as a patient when I was 13 years old. In my family, we have about six nurses, three doctors. So it was just a natural thing for me. I became a nurse because my mother thought it would be a good idea. But 38 years later, I'm still at it, so I guess it was a fit. <laughs> Home care is definitely a place where one can find various uh, settings from client home visiting, to clinic settings, school settings, as well as retirement homes and long-term care settings. So there's really a breadth of knowledge and skill set that one can develop within a home and community care. Through stands for the Tactical Healthcare Response Team. We're a mobile team. We are able to be deployed into different neighborhoods. We could be working at a community center. We could be at a food bank. We could be at a senior center. We're able to pack up and go to where we're needed. The UHNIC program is a collaboration between VHA and UHN in order to help patients transition from the hospital to home where they feel more comfortable. The UHN program is rewarding because I get to see my patients transition from the hospital back to being well. I'm able to connect with my patients on a personal level. We don't necessarily have to focus on our wound care or medication administration. We can get to know each other. I always say what makes home and community care nursing so unique to me is that you're not just seeing your client as a disease or an illness. You get to see the clients for who they are in their home environment. It's not only about the physical health, it's about the mental health, spiritual, psychosocial, and that's where I would say it is about that connection the relationship that you form with the clients and families.
To be a really good nurse, you have to determine that this is a vocation and not a job. It's your relationships with the patients or the people you work with or the communities that you work in and a feeling of satisfaction of a job well done that keeps you in it. Home and community nursing is rewarding because it allows client-centered care. Uh, for example, when we go see client at home, we also look for uh, client's uh, ability for self-care, uh, the food security, safety. So one of the most rewarding things about being a PHA nurse is the opportunity to advance your skills. The scope of practice for nurses are always evolving and you have to always try to keep up with those. And I think as an organization, when we allow our nurses to go back and educate themselves, we're letting the public know that when a nurse comes to your home, they're gonna get someone who knows what they're doing. At VHA, and as part of my nursing career, the thing that I'm most proud of is mostly my education. I can actually help other people, not just only with my words, but I can actually help them with my skills. The interpersonal care, the patient-centered care. The nursing work at VHA I'm most proud of is the VHA-run clinics because I was one of the first nurses to be part of the project. It was a pilot project to test and see how the concept of community nursing would work, where we switched from not going to the client's home but having the clients come to us. I'm very proud to see how the clinic has only Involved, but also that as an organization, we were the trendsetters. It's not very often that you get to be part of such an opportunity. So to be one of those first nurses to um, be involved in the clinic, I see it not only as a proud moment in my career, but also as part of the organization. I'm proud of the nature of my work, where I get to connect with people. In my first year of work, uh, I received a thank you later. That made me realize that I'm making difference in people's lives a simple appreciation, a thank you from my client and the client family makes my day. It's that understanding of who that patient is truly. I think that is what's so enriching. And yes, I am proud. <laughs> to be a nurse and proud for all my colleagues. My name is Sandra Lee James and I'm a nurse. I'm Catherine Nickel and I am a nurse. My name is Ashley Chambers and I'm a nurse. I'm Barbara McPherson and I'm a nurse. My name is Kendall Walford and I'm a nurse. My name is Sangeeta Maharsan and I am a nurse. I, I tear up every time I see that, and um, I just uh, enjoy hearing from our nurses directly. I would also like to say that um, I continue to wear my credentials to the CNA, and I'm proud to say not only my NRN, but I have my certification in community health nursing, and also my I'm a certified pediatric nurse through the U.S. Board certification process. Um, we sponsor credentialing at VHA because we value that our nurses seek excellence in practice and commit to lifelong learning and the use of reflective practice and all the educational opportunities were so evident in the voices of the nurses represented here. As much as we value what nurses do and how we support them to do even better, what also drives me every day is hearing from our clients why nurses are changing lives every day. Next slide, please. I want to make sure I don't overstep my time. I think what is important to hear at VHA, you saw some examples of the through team working in clinics, working in people's homes. We also have a transitional care unit where you can provide 24 seven shift nursing along with the team. We have shift uh, nursing opportunity opportunities we have visiting and more and more opportunities through hospital home programs or innovative models that we are Really, we have one program, it's a nurse-led, um, team-based innovative model uh, for hospital home, but a variety of different things and opportunities. What kind of clients would you care for? If you've worked in, law, in a, a hospital setting before as an internationally educated nurse, sometimes hospitals are geared around specialties, but in home care, you have the opportunity to take care of a number of different populations, including populations like children, frail seniors, people living with mental health and addictions, 
uh, caring for people who are post-surgical, post-acute and post-trauma, as well as people that are in some of the surgical uh, conditions that you might enjoy, or people living with chronic diseases like congestive heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, progressive neuromuscular disorders, genetic and autoimmune disorders. We also support people living with acute and life-threatening illnesses, such as cancer, acute uh, kidney failure, as well as working with palliative people, both adult and pediatric. The opportunity to have a breadth of experience while also targeting your specialty is what you can find at VHA. Next slide. But in my experience, many nurses are also looking, especially when they come to a new organization, a new country, a new province, looking to grow and develop your nursing skills. Internationally educated nurses bring tremendous skill, knowledge, and judgment. But we know that when you go into a new, I imagine, uh, and I've heard from internationally educated nurses that I hired in the past, when you come to a new country, you have to relearn some of those important things. You still have a lot of knowledge, skill, and judgment. And that's why since 2010, I've been actively supporting hiring and being involved in, in uh, supporting internationally educated nurses to find their way as Ontario nurses at a time when many other organizations did not value um, their expertise. We are an incredibly diverse city and our clients and our staff represent the diversity that we believe as richness to our organization. Uh, it is, I'm an immigrant myself, although I came here when I was three years old. And when I could speak to people in, in their language, it opens doors. But even if you cannot speak their language, a respect for people's diversity opens doors every time. But if you're looking for some of the skills that you would like to expand, I would say in home care, half of our nurses love wound care, half of them love infusion therapy, but you have an opportunity to practice wound care, infusion therapy, dialysis, tracheostomy and ventilator care, lots of ventral feeding, pharyngeal suctioning and oxygen therapy, urinary catheterization, diabetes management, and much more. Every day we're asked to explore the boundaries of what we used to think was safe nursing practice when we started to provide inotropic therapy and community for people waiting for heart transplant, both pediatric and adult. It is because we are a learning organization with a strong commitment to evidence-based practice, every time we are provided with an opportunity to see to expand the boundaries of what our nurses can do, we do that with that perspective. I think that is an important part that many new nurses coming to Ontario look for. Next slide. However, that is not only skills. And with our primary nurse model, you could have relationships that last for up to 90 days in some of the hospital home programs. But for some of our clients, they're getting service over a year or two. And those are strong bonds. So what home care do, nurses do more than anyone is they learn how to build relationships, how to use therapeutic communication, how to engage clients. They know how to build capacity through chronic disease self-management, how to develop professional relationships through collaboration with primary care and the interprofessional team. So it's not just working in isolation as nurses, but working with the PSWs who support your clients, with the occupational therapists or physiotherapists, or dietitian or speech language pathologist. We have all those services within home care. How do we promote access and equity? Sangeeta talked about the social determinants of health, supporting people that don't have enough food, enough money to, to influence their care. And so the social prescribing that many of our nurses are are involved with, uh, making referrals and linkages to our community support, our, our charitable side or other community partners uh, to address some of their social needs that are impacting their health. You know, the values of home care nurses are all about caring, primary health care, multiple ways of knowing, individual and community partnerships, and empowering clients and their families and social justice. If this matters to you, 
if you are a nurse that likes to develop these relationships, that likes to partner with your clients and families, and that will grow as they grow, then VHA is where you should be. Home care is where you should be. And don't think home care is just about visiting people in their home. You don't have to have a car to work in at VHA. We have lots of opportunities where you can work in a clinic or in a transitional care unit. You can do shift nursing or you can do visiting nursing and many more opportunities to come. If you see, if you are a person that likes a challenge, if you wish that others are treated with respect and appreciation, whether they speak English correctly or not, or they don't speak English at all, you can make a difference. And for us at VHA, we know that people who are internationally educated and immigrants to our city are highly intelligent. And we respect every person from wherever they come. 71% of our employees um, speak in another language and a, and a high number were not born in Ontario or in Canada. I think that speaks a lot of how we support people and how do we support our clients. So uh, that's all I want. I'm sure I exceeded my time, but as an immigrant and witnessing my parents struggle to be acknowledged for their intelligence, VHA is where you will be treated as the intelligent, empowered nurse that you want to be. And we would be honored to support your journey to registration in Ontario. Thank you. I get emotional when I think about uh, just the great work that VHA does. So it's because I'm retiring in a couple of months that um, I wanna say this has been a fantastic journey for me. And I hope each of you that are coming to Ontario will find that perfect journey for you. I hope it's in home care, but I wish you all the best wherever you end up. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. This was amazing. You touched everybody. I see all the claps in the room and I know you've touched everybody no matter, it doesn't matter if we're not in the same room. That was very touching. Thank you very much. Yep. Can you hear us? We can hear you, yes. Um, perfect. Hello, everyone. It is wonderful to see Care Center and VHA together here, both integral part of my nursing career in Canada. I'll speak higher. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandra Tedesco. You're my inspiration. You taught me that uh, nurse show leadership in client care, client advocacy, and complex client care, um, management, case management. You also gave me the opportunity to extend my role beyond point of care nurse. And thank you, VP Sandra Lizames, who always supported my point of care nursing role. Mm -hmm. And today I'm here to talk about um, how grateful I am to be a, a member of Care Center, how grateful I am to receive the support from Care Center, and how I'm working here with VHA Home Health Care with some already shared stories and some untold story of my nursing journey in Canada. I'm Sangeeta Mohurzan. I'm an internationally educated nurse from Nepal. Uh, I came in 2015, um, and shortly after arriving to Toronto, I started my processing for a license. So my uh, education record and the work experience from Nepal was delayed due to a massive earthquake the same year. After several months of waiting, the NNS report indicated a few outstanding educational areas in CNO assessed partially met competency requiring to pass OSCE before taking NCLEX. While researching how to address these gaps, I came to know about Care Center and the Health Force Ontario. During this time, I also took part-time position at Tim Hortons and also volunteered at Providence Healthcare while I assist resident during mealtime. 
seeing other IENs, I was one of you back then, uh, other IENs in the information session at Care Center made me realize that I'm, I'm not the only one. I was not the only one with all these dilemmas. My very informative case manager, late Michelle Gordon, taught me more about fulfilling these requirements. I took Selban preparation and also attended job search workshop as a part of IEN integrated bridging program at the care center. I decided to enroll the IEN pathway course uh, offered by George Brown College as I was unsure about the processing time and with uncertainty and the fact my safe practice would expire before getting registration. George Brown College course fulfills uh, the practice requirement uh, after completing several subjects and the clinical hours. I was amazed at the nursing scope in Canada uh, and the continuing education. I built great confidence when I successfully passed OSCE and I prepared for NCLEX. By this time, I also started working part time as a PSW in, uh, through one of the private healthcare agencies. After registering with CNO, I had an observational job shadowing at St. Michael Hospital that was through care center. Initially, I was frightened by the discouraging stories from the other IENs for giving up their registration process and discontinuing their processing. Still, I took that fear to build up my confidence. I was straightforward. I worked uh, diligently to get my license for nursing. The care center provides extensive support to nurses looking to return to practice. Unfortunately, my job search was very challenging. I lost one interview because I didn't have Canadian clinical experience as a graduate of a Canadian institution. My case manager, late Michelle, assisted with my resume and the employment search that time. She recommended that I add successfully pass INCAP ask you to my resume to let the employers know the value of INCAP for nursing entry to practice in Ontario. I still had to explain what it was in interviews while I took RN casual and contract positions. In 2018, I joined VHA Home Healthcare. I had a wonderful preceptorship by an experienced nurse, which boosted my confidence and prepared me to work in the community. Today, I want to take a moment to mention that I was accepted at VHA without being asked for Canadian experience or community experience. I have embraced every opportunity that has come on my way to grow personally and professionally throughout this time. I'm not going to tell you like what to do, what you can do, but I'm going to share my experience. At working at Tim Hortons, I learned to interact with diverse people. I learned about workplace culture, most importantly, making an eye contact, <laughs> smiling and saying thank you. <laughs> so I grew up in a culture where making eye contact is considered rude, especially with people who are older than you. So that was a cultural shock. And avoiding eye contact can be perceived as a sign of low confidence here in Canada. Volunteering at Providence Healthcare helped me learn communication and allowed me to see how is the healthcare workplace and the, how is the healthcare work team. The foundational courses I did, understanding the Canadian healthcare system at Health Force Ontario helped me understand healthcare system, what are federal, what are provincial governments and what is OHIP. So that time, I had no idea what was that. Occupational specific language training for internationally educated health professionals. That was government funded program run at uh, George Brown College in 2015-16. I learned about healthcare team dynamics, the unit, healthcare professionals in Canada. I was surprised to learn how social workers are involved in client care. Because back then in my country, I understood that social worker is a person who volunteered to work in the community or someone who donated money <laughs> uh, for a good cause. An occupational therapist was something new to me. 
Working part-time as a PSW through one of the private healthcare agency, I started getting exposure to the different hospital in Toronto. Later, I was able to upgrade to an RN contract position with the same agency. So over the past six years, I have remained committed to continual growth and learning has never stopped. I really want to thank you, Care Center, for bringing all IENs here and getting connected with the potential employers. This is really great. And my message to the fellow IENs is to be thankful for bringing, uh, thankful for the changes the College of Nurses of Ontario has uh, made so far regarding registration process. And all my best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to give you a call as well. <laughs> Let me take a picture of this. So, uh, Sidira, you're one of our proudest um, uh, uh, John Lasman Award winners. Yeah, so you are the only winner, not a co-winner, in the RN category. So I want to make that correction. So every year we have uh, uh, RN and uh, RPN category for the John Lasman Award. And so get a one award in the thick of COVID. Yes. 2021, 2020 right? And we are so proud of her. And I'd like to thank you very much you. for, for uh, being part of the winner family. Yes. And also, you are a living example to all the IENs, the tremendous tr contribution that can be made by an IEN. So congratulations. Thank you. And I hope you have many of our uh, uh, Members yeah. will join you, and uh, I can count on you being the mentor yeah. because we also have an optional job sharing program and virtual mentoring program so that to coach you. So, many of uh, the folks here they are pretty new to our um, uh, service, though. Yeah. So, probably that is something that we like very, to do. Very, very uh, yeah, they are pretty new uh, compared to some maybe already to be RNs or RPNs. Uh, so, they need some of the coaching, hand holding, but you can hear what. The other Sandra, Sandra Azeb, I've been working with Sandra for years as well, uh, that how welcoming WHJ is to all the international educated nurses and, and giving the proper recognition uh, to uh, the members who are international educated. I know there's not just nurses, but others as well. So you're known for that. And we're so proud to be your partner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to have a formal title, but I, you know, I see Sangita as a formal leader at the point of care and really influencing and taking practice and reshaping tomorrow's uh, home care process. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, yes, we are also, we are a fan of hers as well. So, <laughs> and also, next. She's supposed to go right there. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's our. <laughs> And next we have uh, Joyce who will share her journey. So come on up, Joyce, um, and you know, introduce your role as well would be great. And okay. More. Yes. I say good afternoon to everyone. Afternoon. Greetings, Sandra, to the school who have also been my mentor as I journey through um, VHA. Thank you, Sandra, uh, Lee, as well. So I am a best practice supervisor with the Central Palliative Team here in VHA. Yeah, my journey started here in VHA. I arrived in Canada in 2011. And when I arrived, I wasn't pursuing my career yet as a nurse. So I had an employment agency that directed me to VHA workfare, the workshop and the fair. So when I got there, even though I didn't have Canadian experience, I was employed as a PSW with VHA being an internationally educated nurse. So that's where my journey started. So I want to say thank you to VHA giving us the opportunity. So when I started working with VHA, I said, okay, I'm going to go for registration. I've heard about care before I came down to Canada. So I went to the care center office and I told them I'm internationally educated nurse, attended their workshop and I was able to become a member and there I registered with them and started my 
they put me through how to go about my registration here in Canada. So I have to apply to CNO. So that's how my journey started. And all this while I was still working at VHA as a PSW. So my journey started uh, with me registering at um, CNO and I have to go through all the process of getting my credentials because I've worked back home in Africa, I've worked in Europe, and here I was in Canada, and I have to get credentials from all these different continents down to Canada to be able to uh, pursue my career here in Ontario. So going through the process was challenging, I'll tell you, but with the help of working here in VHA, I really get a lot of support. I got supported through the team in VHA, through the coordinators, my care team supervisor at that time, I let them know I was pursuing my career in nursing here. And then I was introduced to the WorkSmarts, the VHA WorkSmart program, which is a program that will assist us. It has, this program assisted me while I was going through my nursing education. So I was able to get assistance financially, even though I was working it, and I also get financial support from them through the WorkSmart program. So through the work first program, I was being supported with my tuitions and every money I paid, I was being refunded half of it. So that really motivated me as well. So VHA have been a pillar in helping me with my career. So with care, I registered with care. And after all, um, after going through the assessment uh, with CNO, I have to take the, uh, to do, to write up a supplementary assessment. Uh, for CNO. So Kia was there to help me. I was given a case manager. I know I have about three case managers um, in care, and the one that worked with me less was Maria Krumo. So she was there with me. She told me I have to go back to school. So that's how I, and I went to George Brown to register and then took the letter from CNO and was able to go to uh, George Brown so that I can be ready. And then they make a career pathway, a career plan for me. And I took this back to care, to my case manager in care. And she was following up with me step by step as I go through all this program. So by the time I was, it was taken, I, I started to register as an RN, but it was taking us so much that I said, okay, I'm going to go for RPN. So I told my <laughs> tutor in George Brown that, can I go for the RPN? She said, yes, if I want to. So I said, okay. So that's how I ended up uh, going for an RPN. And so when I did, before my RPN exam, Kia was there to help me with the review classes. So I intended to review classes, have a facilitator called Ruth. So with her, I was able to go through the, they took us through the process. It took some time preparing me and all the other internationally educated nurses. Um, after that, I was able to pass my RPN. So when I passed my RPN, I came back to VHI and said, I passed my RPN. So I became a uh, visiting nurse. So I was a visiting nurse for some time. And during that period, I continued with my career at George Brown because I wanted to register as an RN. That was my goal. But I didn't stop. So I continued. So working with VHA as a visiting nurse, I continued with my schooling with the help of VHA, with the WorkSmart. Also with the coordinators who helped me to adjust my um, caseload so that I'll be able to accommodate my schooling. So I was with my care team supervisor, I was able to go back, continue with schooling, continue working. And then I got, uh, after some time, there was a position here in VHA as well. And then I took the care team supervisor to work with PSW. So with that, I continue working as a care team supervisor and continue with my pursuing my RN and also at George Brown. So with that, and also with care, with the support of my case manager, she was always following up with me. At every step, she say, where are you? Are you preparing? And I took the review class for my RN, went for the RN exam at the end class, and I passed in 2018. So continue working with VHA and I continue to grow. And there was a position for the best practice palliative in central team. I apply and I got the job. And today I'm a nursing supervisor here at VHA. And also working with the nurses, it's been very amazing. 
So VHA, I want to say very big thank you to Pierre. I want to say very big thank you to VHA team and also to my colleagues. And they were very supportive. And also I want you to know that as we are going through this journey, you can have a work-life balance. That really worked for me because with VHA supporting my career and also having, so I, my social life didn't suffer. I also have so friends and I also have colleagues. In my team, they know I was schooling and everyone was very supportive. So that when I'm in school or going for clinical placement, my team was being covered by my colleague who we are also care team supervisor. So I want to say a very big thank you to everyone here who has helped me. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, Joyce. And I also want you to know that if you so decide to pursue your education, we're here to help you too, Care Center. Yeah. Uh, one of our um, uh, members, uh, Gwen William, just got her doctorate. Wow. So yeah, I have the privilege of uh, uh, being her uh, preceptor for her master's. So she just completed her doctorate. So very, very happy. Just remember everyone, when you become a Care Center member, you have a lifetime membership, okay? Mm -hmm. One time, a uh, 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 fee to enter, and that's it. Like it or not, you're part of the family for the rest of your life. Okay, we can go ahead to uh, the next slide, please. Thank you, and I'm going to hand it over, and you've heard a lot of uh, different opportunities being presented, so Matt and sure. Ernesto are going to share that with you now. Hi, everybody, everyone in the room, as well as those at home. Uh, my name is Matt Wong. I'm the Director of Professional Practice, Clinical Education, and uh, IPAC, and Ernesto? My name is Ernesto Sequeira. I am the Director for Human Resources in Talent Acquisition and Memorial. So um, we'll let you welcome you here. Uh, I think you've heard a lot of great things, um, both from Sandra sharing, well, all the Sandras, but certainly uh, um, you saw a list of all the, the technical skills that you could maybe be part of, right? Um, some of the things that you'll need to do uh, or you'll be supporting client care uh, in the home and the community. And with that, uh, you know, nobody knows everything. And I'll share a little bit about myself. So my background, I started uh, in the pediatric oncology uh, in hospital uh, at SickKids. And what I realized that uh, when I came out into the community was you take for granted a lot of what you have and what you don't have. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, uh, in that setting, um, you become very specialized. So certainly in oncology, you, you do a lot of chemotherapy, you do uh, certain skills. But when I came out of the community, I realized that while I knew a small set of skills very well, because those are the same patients that, that come to the, the oncology ward, there's a whole lot of skills that I myself did not know, right? Ask me how many times I saw someone with a tracheostomy, saw someone, um, very few needed urinary, um, you know, inkdome catheters, but those are skills that I didn't have because I wasn't exposed to it. And so in home care, seeing that list of various skills, that is somewhere that, you know, you might see different patients in the same day even, where they're, they're from very different uh, areas of, of, of health, uh, healthcare need. And so you're the one going in. And so knowing that, you know, we, knowing that VHA has a, has a team that supports that education is really important. So know that you don't, you don't feel alone, right? Because if you haven't used something in a while, you know, you, you don't entirely lose it, but you need a little bit of that practice support to, to bring you back. So I think I can go to the next slide um, to quickly share. Um, before we go into the nitty gritty details of how we support uh, nurses when they're here, how do we support nurses as they're on their journey towards uh, kind of joining us? And so there's a lot of words on there. It might be a little small. But really what we're sharing is that this bottom, uh, this, uh, bottom row, uh, when you have an edu internationally educated nurse, we talked about how we recognize folks um, as having a lot of experience and expertise. Um, and whether this be, um, you know, in Sangita's case, where she had started off at Tim Hortons and then uh, volunteering uh, or working in another healthcare agency as a PSW, that's a really good way to gain kind of that, some of that uh, contextual uh, experience uh, while you're here. Right, and starting off with that. But as, as to what Joyce had mentioned, what does that journey look like, right? So part of that is supporting internationally educated uh, nurses being part of care. So one of those uh, things that we do is, uh, if you're not a member of care already, um, we'd be happy to support those those of our, um, you know, if you end up going VHA, uh, in addition to some of the work smart programs that support funding some of that education, 
paying for that lifetime membership that Ruth mentioned, right? Getting you connected um, so that all across the journey, you have access to care, right? So that's an investment that, that VHA would like to, you know, put uh, put towards you guys, right? Because like Sangita, like Joyce, uh, it's, you know, there's a lot, there's a, you can go really, really far, right? With the right supports. And so we would connect you guys with, uh, you know, with care. And then, for example, some of you might be asked to do a, um, practice experience, right? Gain that kind of, um, you know, the CNO might say you need to get, it's been a while since you've demonstrated that practice. Uh, the supervised practice experience that the uh, CNO offers as a way to, you know, get that as a, while you're on the path to licensure, uh, that 140 hours, we can work with you, right? Within VHA, we offer preceptorship, um, you know, placements to um, students that come, uh, that are, you know, doing the program right now. But at the same time, we also know that there's this group of nurses who are, ready they're, they're ready to get their license they're ready to start working but they just need this one placement and actually we prioritize those uh on top of the student placements because you know third year nursing school you still have a year coming out fourth year you haven't quite decided but the internationally educated nurses they know where they want to be they want to uh, do a placement in a place where they can become more familiar with so that when they get that license you know they already have that context they can start seeing those patients maybe some of those patients that you were seeing during your your practice experience will be those that you end up taking on, right? So you have that continuity of care, right? The, 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 if the pediatric, the parents or the caregivers, those people already know you, right? So we would prioritize that SPEP. Um, but let's say you're working already as a personal support worker with us. Um, we know that people have responsibilities, right? Uh, you, might have you might have family obligations and other things um, that you need. And so not everyone can have the luxury of saying, all right, I'm going to stop working for uh, for the next you know, four to six weeks because I need to do these 140 hours, right? One of the benefits uh, of, you know, while you're doing it at the same time as perhaps working with, with us is, uh, Joyce mentioned this, a supportive team. And so being able to work with the supervisors, the coordinators to say, all right, we're not asking anyone to quit or put their, their um, you know, put their work on hold because there's obligations, right? Um, what's the pace that you would like? So you might say, well, I really want to get these 140 hours in, but I can only, um, I only want, uh, I can only afford to take maybe two or three days off a week to do this placement while um, I'm doing the other uh, two days uh, working with, a, with, with that regular case on those two days. And because it's all within the same employer or the same organization, we can offer that flexibility, right? So we'd work very closely with uh, on a kind of a case by case and not just mandate, all right, well, if you want this, you're about to put everything on hold for you know four weeks, five weeks uh, while you get this placement. So it's nice to have that flexibility, right? Um, and then ultimately, as, you're, as you um, do your schooling and as you get your, your requirements in order, um, you know, eventually you'll be ready, right? And then you'd already have a very strong line of uh, connection to, you know, I mean, our HR teams here today, right? For example, where you could just even talk to your supervisor, say, hey, I, I'm interested in uh, working with this population. Um, is there a, a team member I can talk to? So it lets you explore, right? Even while you're here. So I think that's kind of where we support the steps of your professional nursing journey uh, at wherever point you might be, you might be at, right? And beyond. Um, a, a couple of the other things uh, at the bottom too in the section, second section uh, for B, RPN, RN bridging program. So that's something that Joyce actually also mentioned too, right? You may choose to do your RPN, get your RPN license first as an IEN and then continue to, um, you know, uh, expand your scope of practice uh, and going back to school. And Joyce was smart, you know, she she was, uh, you know, kind of keeping it, um, how do I say this? Let's just say Joyce was smart because, you know, taking advantage, <laughs> taking advantage of the, the opportunities that VHA invests in, in its em employees, um, you know, doing your schooling here, getting that 50% back on, on, on that, you know, tuition that you're paying out. And let's just, let's be honest, tuition is not cheap, right? It's, it's, a, it actually has continued to go up. And so, you know, having an employer that is so, so supportive, um, it's a smart move. So um, that's one way that we, we help out. And the other thing is on top of those, um, we also have heard from our placement partners from the school. So let's say you are doing your, your bridging programs. We've taken bridging students too. Hearing from the students, uh, sorry, hearing from the student placement coordinators, it's really hard to find placements, right? Placements is actually a limiting factor uh, to find placements. So they might say, oh, it's really hard. Let's, I know it's not your first choice, but let's get you into somewhere so that you can actually graduate um, because we need to have those certain number of hours, right? If we know that you're, 
you're one of you're already an internal candidate, uh, we'd prioritize you first. So you know it's great to accommodate the U of T, the the University of Toronto, um, uh, sorry, other schools, but kind of take care of our our own, so to speak, right? So and I think that's perfectly fair. That's definitely above board because again, if we're going to invest in a, at a chance. Uh, to bring someone on board as a nurse when they're done their schooling, why not inv why not take the chance on someone that already has shown us commitment as an organization, right? So that's that's how we kind of set aside some of our pathways and we help you from a career planning perspective. I'm going to let Ernesto uh, share um, about some of the other initiatives and then I'll um, end off with uh, a segue into how we support nurses um, once they're here to maintain those skills. Over to you. Where are we? Yeah. Schedule. Schedule? Okay, so I'll try to keep it quick and consistent because the next presentation part is from actually the recruitment process for nurses at DHA, which I'm sure you'll be interested in hearing about. So, just to piggyback on what Matt was mentioning, we do like to recognize the effort that all our international educated nurses are putting in and the process, how long and time consuming it can be. So one of the things that we do in addition to supporting with your care membership, uh, you probably have heard already about the Work Smart program is a program that we have in place at VHA to support financially in your education. And we can reimburse you up to 50% of your education. And that is a combination program between human resources and the best practices team to encourage you continue your education, even after you graduate and you become a nurse. First, if there is any opportunity for you, you want to explore a leadership position like Joyce did, or you want to explore any other position that requires you to upgrade your skills, we're more than happy to look into those uh, opportunities for you. Um, I also want to mention that from a recruitment perspective, we are always looking and recognizing the effort and the experience that international educated nurses bring on the table, like Sandra Tedesco mentioned at the beginning. So uh, surprisingly enough, not everybody's aware that as an international get a nurse, you can work as a PSW. Did all of you knew that already? Absolutely. Yes, seems like it's, it's being better known now. So that's amazing because five years ago when that was still the case, not everyone knew about it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to reinforce that if you are considering to explore a career at PSA and you're open to start or put your foot at the door as a PSW and then move up and continue your career with us, that's an opportunity. That's why my team is here today, just to explore those opportunities and let you know what is available for you. So you say, hey, I'm down. I would like to work as a PSW when I'm getting my destination and become registered nurse and then move up the ladder or change into different uh, portfolios. That's, that's when our human resources team come in to support you and then we guide you through that process. Um, as a PSW, you will have the opportunity to also be part of the VHA team as an employee. So they're also unionized, just so you know. So we have different perks and benefits that comes with it. And we'll be able to explore and tell you what, what does that mean. We have employee programs, we have perks and discounts, the addition of everything that you have heard today. We also have recognition events. We have many other ways that we like to recognize our employees. And then we want to help you to continue growing and stay with us. Because really, at the end, we want to make sure that you feel taken care of. Um, so the next bit of the presentation with my colleague will present later is how does that recruitment looks like? How, what do you need to do to apply for a position with VHA? What is the nursing position that we have available? And how would it look like after you move into VHA? One last thing before I move on, you do end up staying with VHA and you come and work with us. We have a referral program where we also pay you for referring other friends and family members to work at VHA. So if you work here and say like, I'm, I'm part of VHA family, I wanna refer a friend, family, it doesn't matter what position it is, it could be PSW, it could be nursing, it could be coordination, it could be any, any role, then we are going to give you a bonus for referring that person and working at VHA. And you get rewarded for the moment that you share the posting with them, for the moment they apply the interview, you already start making or earning money for that. So those are another advantages that we have. Please take advantage of that. It's free money, just sharing and posting. That sounds very easy. So please take advantage of that program as well. So with that, I'll pass it on to the next person. Will it be Mado? Yes. Next slide, please. Almost there. Almost there? There you go. If you do something, we don't need that conversation. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. OK, there you go. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Madhu. I am the HR supervisor of the nursing portfolio. Um, so we, before I get started, I do want to say, hearing stories from my colleagues and seeing you all here, 
I am very proud of all of the steps you've all taken to be here today, and I wish you all the best. Hopefully, you take those next steps here at VHA, and I will take a deep dive into how you can get there. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So with VHA, we take pride in community work, and this is pretty much what sets us aside. Uh, when you're working in the community, it is independent work because you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your clients, but you do have that supportive team that is always there. So whether it's your coordinators, your supervisors, and your colleagues to make sure you have that connection. Um, we do have partnerships with the HCCSS, United Way, and others to make sure that we are you know, fulfilling our role as uh, members of society for our clients. Uh, whether it's a PSW role or a nursing role, uh, you do require traveling from client to client for the most part. We do have uh, programs where you don't really have to, but we do uh, have that for most. But you can take the uh, public transit. You can also drive as well. And one very important thing that I would like to point out, and this goes hand in hand with uh, Joyce's story, is our hours are very flexible. Um, for nurses, we self-schedule. And um, for our PSW roles, uh, you know, your coordinators and supervisors do work with you to make sure that you have that flexibility, whether it's days, evenings, weekends, uh, nights, to make sure that you can still attend to your other commitments. Next slide, please. Can I just comment about HCCSS? That's home and community care. And that's really uh, one of our funders that funds our uh, program okay, for home visiting. Okay, so a deeper dive into our PSW roles. In order to work as a PSW, these are some of the requirements that we have at VHA. So um, a PSW, DSW, healthcare aid, paramedic certificate from a recognized institution, RN or RPN students that have completed at least a year, or internationally educated nurses, midwives, or medical doctors. Uh, we do have a requirement to work on weekends. So it is like a weekend rotation every other weekend. Some programs for nursing is every three weeks. So it's pretty much like once a month. Um, and then for, as I mentioned earlier, we do have travel. You have the option to travel from home to home um, via public transit or car. And lastly, uh, another requirement is, of course, you know, maintain communication and interpersonal skills because you are um, interacting closely with your clients. Next slide, please. Okay. So a brief overview of some of the duties that you may encounter as a PSW. Um, so they are home care assignments and some uh, responsibilities could include um, assisting with uh, daily living activities such as grooming, dressing and bathing, uh, meal planning and preparation, mobility and transfers, light household duties such as cleaning, laundry, washing dishes, and of course, reporting any changes in client behavior or condition. Next slide. All right, so on the flip side, uh, working as a nurse at VHA, these are some of the requirements. So a nursing diploma or degree, uh, registration in good standing with the College of Nurses of Ontario, in other words, CNO, uh, client care experience within the community, uh, CPR or first aid certificate, and if you are a visiting nurse, then a driver's license and vehicle. Next slide. Some duties as a nurse, uh, so you would be providing one-on-one -on -one care if it's within client homes. However, if it is when, within one of our transitional cares or a retirement residence, um, those are more so you would see multiple um, clients. Uh, we have three programs, which I will get into shortly. So you have the ability to work with our palliative clients, adult clients, and our pediatrics. At VHA, we call them child and family clients. Um, some of the sort of skills that you would encounter include wound care, IV therapy, foot care, documentation, uh, diabetes management, medication administration, and overall assessments. And lastly, providing counseling and support along with education 
for clients and their families. Next slide. Okay, that might be a little hard to see, but I'll do my best to give you an overview. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have three main uh, sort of programs at VHA for our nursing programs. Uh, so the first one is our adult visiting programs and our clients who are within this program are typically 18 and above. Uh, the, this role is typically a visiting role and uh, you would visit them uh, in their home and assist them with what uh, sort of care they may require and documentation is done on a tablet. So we do have um, tablets that we use, uh, you get training on them um, and that's how documentation is done. The next program is our palliative care program. So this program uh, involves delivering home nursing services to those who um, are our end of life care clients. Uh, our nurses within this program are committed to enhancing the quality of care with um, focus on effective symptom and pain management to improve their quality of life. And who knows, if you work at VHA, you might be working alongside Joyce, who is one of our um, palliative care supervisors. Uh, the next program is our child and family program. So this program um, has a mix of either shift, which means you are just at one location, you don't need a vehicle, or visiting, which uh, requires a vehicle to go from home to home. This, um, cl these clients are between 1 and 25, and uh, the program is designed to assist uh, those who have medically complex needs, and it could be within their home or a school environment. All three of these programs that I've just discussed, we do have a sign-on bonus at VHA um, for full-time roles. So our palliative care, it's if you are within the Durham region, um, our adult and child and family is any region. Um, so something to keep in mind. And uh, lastly, we do also have clinics. So this, uh, these clinics are across uh, the GTA. So sometimes we do have them in the North York area, um, sort of in the Etobicoke area, Brampton or Malton area. And these uh, clinics are designed to have clients that are appointment based only. So there are no walk-ins and you work alongside other VHA um, colleagues to assist them. So some things you might see our wound care, IV therapy, medication injections, uh, drain care, and stomach care. Next slide, please. That's a great question. So typically, uh, you would have to start with one program, at least for the first year at VHA. And let's say, you know, you are part time for maybe palliative. And then a year later, you would also like to work as a maybe casual nurse or, pal um, or another part time in child and family, then you do have the option to do that. We have uh, had a lot of adult because they also work in the clinic, right? Because those yeah. are a little bit closer to some of the skills that you uh, would associate with the visiting program in the clinic. Not to say that you can't do child and family and adults, but you find that in terms of skill set, uh, it's good variety, but the populations are a little bit different. Not to say that you can't, but people tend not to. They usually do it like the clinic. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Right. Right. Yeah. So next slide, please. Okay. Uh, just a quick reminder of what uh, my colleagues Matt and Ernesto did speak about. So we do have the Work Smart program, which will allow you to work and pursue your education at the same time. Uh, with VHA assisting you with 50% of your education costs. Next slide. Okay. Uh, the Supervised Practice Experience Partnership, in other words, SPEP, is a uh, program that Matt touched base on as well. So it's partnership with the CNO, and it is a minimum of 140 hours to complete. So you can do that here. Um, and we will assist you with that program to get, um, you know, your evidence of practice or the evidence of practice and language proficiency. Next slide, please. Okay. Let's say you've received your uh, CNO registration, you've just received it, and you would like to um, have a more thorough 
uh, training program, we have the new graduate guarantee program. Um, if you are eligible, then you would be able to apply through that portal itself. And the way this works is um, it's a full-time role and you start off by having 12 weeks of training, which uh, is curated by our clinical educators. So they create this uh, plan for you, like a curriculum pretty much, and they work alongside with you so that you get that extensive training. Um, after 12 weeks, then you are you know, ready to go and you can start working you know, on your own in the community. So this is something that we have as well. And at the bottom there, you can see the eligibility for if you are an internationally educated nurse. So if you're a nurse whose um, nursing education was completed outside of Canada, um, if you haven't been employed as a nurse in Ontario in the six months prior to starting the program, um, and you would have to be legally eligible to work full-time hours in Ontario. And lastly, in order to participate in this program, it is a full-time program. Um, so you would have to commit to a full-time employment at BHA. Yes. Hi, uh, you explained about the CNO mm -hmm. yeah, application process and then what is the I did that and uh, I got my temporary class. Uh, I should work as a temporary class nurse uh, and uh, do the, my entrance exam as well. So which part of this I can apply to? With, with the temporary class, you said, yes. right? Okay. Are you, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, so uh, so your question, I believe, is asking what the ESPEN versus temporary class, is yeah. that correct? I, I, I asked my, I got my report from NNS, okay. and then I applied for the exam, and then the, from NNS, you know, they told me I'm eligible to work as an RN under temporary class nurse. Uh, sorry, uh, just to clarify this, so this is Rulayn Mubadjan, the program manager at Care Center. So those uh, nurses, IENs, who are actually eligible to uh, for the temporary class have to write only the ANCLEPS. Everything yes. else is yep. actually a requirement by CNO. So um, some organization, I'm not sure how VHA deals with this, but some organization, they give them the offer letter with a condition mm -hmm. then to, f to get their ANCLEPS uh, exam and registration yeah. within a period of time. So I'm not sure yeah. how this... No, yeah. that is second part. Yeah. First, I should get my temporary class... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Offer, offer, job yeah. offer, yeah. and then the side of that, I can go for my ankle yeah. so Yes. That is, uh, yeah. So that is So the the organization will give you the offer letter based on the time yes. license. So yes. then, so can... then we, if you you said there is a job for BSW for RN. So which part I am? So uh, it depends what you're applying for. If you're applying for BSW, you can already do, apply, right? Um, with your interest students. But if you're applying for the temporary nursing license, yeah. you can't get the nurse license from the CNO until a job offer is made to you. So if you're interested, you would apply to VHA. Let us know that you're applying for a temporary license. Yes. We would then, um, you'd go probably go through the interview. We have a process set up. We set one up last year with, with the changes in the temp license. Right now, the CNO allows you to have a temporary license for up to two years yes. to write it. However, at VHA, we want people to show progress. So that's what Rolo was saying, right? Yes. Some organizations have set uh, time time frames. So for us, we um, if, if there is a temporary nurse, the temporary nurse still needs to be supported by a preceptor supervision and all that yes. stuff. Yes. We'll make that available. But we need to ask each team, when they do the interview, do you have the support available? And if they say yes, yes, we have the support available, they would do an interview. They would um, you know, say, yes, this, we have support available. We can support that. And we can uh, hire a temporary nurse for a period of time. That's when a letter, a job offer, um, will go to the candidate to write, to send back to the CNO to say, "Look, I have a job offer. Yes. Please give me a temporary license with the restriction on yes. the registry that says yeah. you can only work here." Yeah. And in that time, we'd support you, and you'd be um, you know, working in a temporary risk capacity, right? Yes. Is there any chance? Yes. Uh, we can connect to that yes. later, but yes, we that, that we have a process. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so for asking about it. And uh, sorry. Uh, with care center members membership, you will get all the support as well in terms in terms of preparing for the NCLEX exam. So you will work collaboratively with VHA to ensure like you are well supported. I am from to care. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. pleasure man. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. So 
in, uh, in a nutshell, this is what the path would look like if you start at VHA as a PSW. So you would obtain your CNO and then you would go through the recruitment process. And if you look on the screen, there are different sort of milestones. So uh, like a pre-screen, an interview and things like that. I know it looks like a lot. However, every step of the way, your supervisors, HR, our clinical educators, and a lot of the leaders here at VHA do support you every step of the way um, to make sure that you get to where you would like to get to. Um, so it does look like a lot there, but it really isn't. Um, and we are there for you. Next slide, please. Okay. And once you um, are starting to work as a nurse, this is what our orientation program would look like. Um, it's three to four days and it's a mix of corporate and uh, some clinical education, some IT training and things like that to make sure you are ready to go uh, to start working. Next slide, please. Okay. And uh, my colleague, Ernesto did touch base on this, but these are some of the perks of working at BHA. So we are unionized. Our union is the Service Employees International Union, better known as SEIU. Uh, we have benefits and pension plans um, for if you are full time for benefits. Uh, we have financial support, so the Work Smart program. Um, we have employee assistance program called Inkblot. We have a convenient way of documentation. So we provide you with a tablet, a VHA issued cell phone, depending on what program you are hired for and you get training on all of that. We have a staff recognition events. So whether it's organizational wide or within your uh, program, we do have events. And lastly, the Caribou referral program, which is uh, you get paid for if you have you know, great people that you think could join VHA, you refer them over to us and that's that program there. Next slide. Should be the last one. Next slide, please. Yep. Any questions? Okay, you're good. Any questions okay, here? I think um, that really concludes our formal part for the first hour. I know we had gone over a little bit. Thank you so um, okay. <laughs> yes. So I think the second portion, um, so for those in the room, uh, the educators have set up some stations. You can go see, touch, feel, see what some of the skill set that, uh, you know, the team has been talking about. Um, then you can see what it's like. So feel free, and I think it's really that. And if you have questions, the HR team is here. Sangeeta is here still. Joyce is here as well. We're going to have you know Q and A online. I know it's been it. It's always hard to sort of um, try and do a hybrid approach. We're here if you have questions, and I know. Thank you, Sandra. I know you've been managing all the questions, <laughs> and so appreciate that. Um, so I think. You know, there's no, you know, we'll just uh, move to if you want to divvy up and I don't know, I'm going to leave it to the educators to figure out what that looks like. Um, I think just they're all waiting. They've been waiting yeah. for you. For those online, there's also intro uh, support if you have yes. a question. If you have any questions, uh, we we can move this off maybe from, yeah. from uh, the room and then you can have private consultation with uh, key members. Okay, so I'm going to unplug, yes. I think. Can, so if can you, you have if a I picture? Can just, uh, oh, yes, okay. Sorry, All right, Rola take... really would like a picture. I'm sorry, I'm on the really? Yeah, I would like everyone actually to gather around so we can have this in the background. So for those of you who are online, if you, I get, if you want to be part of the picture, uh, <laughs> maybe turn your cameras on and we're going to make sure that we can see all of you. So whoever would like to be part of the picture, please raise your hand and I will allow you to be uh, entered in. Uh, I'll just give that five seconds. Whoever hand I see up, I'll add into and we'll get the picture. Thank you, everyone. Just give me a few seconds here. So, so I like to uh, uh, basically close up the online version to give permission for those of you who need to do other things. 
I'm so grateful to UHA Home Health Care and uh, also for those of you who are online, I see that we still have over 40 people online. This is very, very good. As you can imagine, Sandra, people are very, very interested. So for those of you who are able to stay, please stay. I see that someone, uh, I see Olivia Lee from British Columbia is with us today. So hopefully a lot of uh, the IEN uh, internationally or in other Good to see you, Dr. Ruth. Uh, services that we change Hawaii and also the opportunities that we heard today the Hawaii to oh, uh, thank you so much. And uh, just a little Great. forecast for tomorrow nice. to wrap up uh, Care Center for International Educated Nurses Nursing Week celebration. Uh, we have uh, 9 o'clock um, Eastern time uh, tomorrow morning uh, to have our very own Ruth Watch Hub Professional Practice to talk about our workplace education program, followed by the awful presentation of the nurse uh, of the uh, um, Mentorship Excellence Award presented to one of our expert nurses uh, from the other's mentor. Oh, so fantastic. thank you so very much, everyone. I see that Megan Wong is on the call here. Uh, she is going to also share something about our viral program, mentoring program as well. So not to be missed, everyone, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Uh, shop and uh, uh, thank you so much, Sandra. Yes. No, yeah. thank you for joining, yeah. and we're really, really appreciative. I know we're waiting for pictures. Um, okay, so turn your cameras on.